Elon Musk unveiled Starship back in 2016, and ever since, the world has been obsessed. But we all know how biased and uninformed most people are, so it's always better to get a professional's opinion on things. So, what do scientists think about Elon Musk's biggest gift to humanity? After SpaceX basically took over the space industry, NASA really warmed up to the Texas-based company, and so did its scientists. Speaking to Ars Technica, NASA research scientist Jennifer Heldman said, You can really take advantage of Starship's architecture and get to the outer solar system in ways we haven't thought about before. It could provide a revolutionary new way of exploring these worlds. Heldman believes that Starship's scale could allow us to eventually send the first humans to Mars, and on top of that, send a whole lot of robotic research equipment to other planets and moons, calling its capabilities extraordinary. Heldman said that planetary scientists need to be thinking about how they can take advantage of Starship. SpaceX actually approached the planetary science community back in 2018 with a series of Mars workshops that addressed basic questions like potential landing sites on the Red Planet and gaps in knowledge that need to be filled before people can safely live and work there. Many big names from the Mars research community were invited to that workshop and several dozen participated. Some planetary scientists had already bought into SpaceX's vision, but others were skeptical at first. Over time, as SpaceX built and tested prototypes, some of these skeptics started to switch lanes. Tanya Harrison, a planetary scientist and Mars expert who participated in those meetings, said, As Starship has begun to seem more real, it has changed people's minds. Starship being selected for the lunar missions was a huge credibility boost. In early 2021, many of the workshop's participants started to recognize the urgency of getting NASA on board with using Starship for science missions. So they banded together and wrote a white paper with Heldman as the lead author, titled Accelerating Martian and Lunar Science Through SpaceX Starship Missions. Aside from Heldman, other Mars researchers from academia, SpaceX, and the space industry in general also signed on to the paper. It basically pushed NASA's leadership to start providing funding for scientific payloads that could fly on Starship. This team of scientists and engineers wrote, NASA must develop a funded program aligned with the development approach for Starship, including a rapid development schedule, relatively high-risk tolerance compared to traditional planetary science missions, and ultimately a high ratio of potential science value for the dollars spent if successful. What sets Starship apart from every other spacecraft in existence right now is its mass. The two biggest constraints today when scientists plan space missions are cost and mass. Starship has a significant effect on the cost by offering a lot more space on the rocket for a lot less money. The biggest change, however, is that scientists don't need to be hyper-focused on mass. They can carry more instruments and more shielding, which according to Harrison, completely changes the game. The white paper authors felt like it was important to highlight the potential value of Starship, despite political push Back. According to the white paper, the development of Starship is a golden opportunity for NASA to rethink how it has done exploration for more than half a century. Missing that would be a shame. SpaceX's potential transcends generations. And we can see this in the case of this next planetary scientist. James Head from Brown University helped NASA select Apollo landing sites in the 60s and trained the astronauts who landed there. He has since gone on to have a distinguished planetary science career. Head enthusiastically signed the white paper and said he appreciates that SpaceX has a compelling vision and is diligently working toward it. When he visited SpaceX's headquarters in Hawthorne, California, Head said that he saw the kind of youth, energy, and determination that propelled the first moon landing. Being on the floor of the SpaceX factory is the closest I've felt to having been in the Apollo program. British scientist Brian Cox is a bona fide global TV sensation, with some interesting takes on SpaceX as well. Cox believes that an expedition to Mars is now well within our power. It's possible that you could if you had the investment. I think we know how to do it but I think it's likely to be more like two decades until mankind is on Mars. But you never know. It's been remarkable how fast SpaceX and Blue Origin are advancing. Cox believes that the biggest change in the industry over the last few years has been the development of reusable rockets, which SpaceX introduced. For the first time in history, we can fly into space and bring the craft that took us there back to Earth in a reusable state. Cox said that these rockets could carry astronauts, scientists, and eventually, anyone who wanted to move from Earth. Cox explained, There's a plan called Mars Direct, which is basically a plan to send the stuff first. 
you send the base first without the people, then once the base is working, you send people. Then it's a permanent settlement and it grows. Of course, all this falls in line perfectly with Elon's own plans for Mars settlement, which are very ambitious. But knowing Elon, building a settlement on Mars is very much in the realm of possibility. Appearing on Brian Cox's new documentary, Adventures in Space and Time, American aerospace engineer Dr. Robert Zubrin said that the idea of interplanetary travel is not beyond our technology. He stressed that a human mission to Mars wouldn't be venturing into new and unknown worlds of physics. We're talking about brass tacks engineering, building systems of moderate size and taking them there. We do not need giant Battlestar Galactica spaceships. Dr. Zubrin thinks of Elon as some sort of folk hero, a gift to humanity, if you will. He said, in the year 2000, we knew about people like Elon Musk. They were characters in science fiction stories of the entrepreneur who would come along and make this happen. Now, those characters have stepped out of science fiction novels, and they are now in the real world, doing this stuff. In early 2021, Elon revealed SpaceX's plan to colonize Mars by building a 1 million strong self-sufficient city by the year 2050. The plan is to produce a thousand of SpaceX's Starship aircraft and launch three a day. The rockets would blast off from Earth, each carrying roughly 100 tons of equipment and 100 people in the hope of building a permanent settlement on Mars. Yeah, Elon continues to blur the lines between science fiction and reality with SpaceX, and we love it. Celebrity scientist and most likely one of the only astrophysicists you know, Neil deGrasse Tyson, is famous for his occasional hot takes on Elon and his companies. Neil has warmed up to the SpaceX CEO in recent years, but he retains a healthy dose of criticism, especially concerning the Mars mission. During an Ask Me Anything session on Reddit back in 2017, one person asked, just wanted to know your thoughts on SpaceX's Falcon 9 relaunch and landing, and what do you think it means for the future of space travel? Neil replied saying that any demonstration of rocket reusability is a good thing, and even stressed that reusability is arguably the most fundamental feature of affordable, expensive things. In the same post, the Reddit user also wanted to know if the famous astrophysicist would ever consider joining a future one-way trip to Mars. Neil responded by saying, I really like Earth, so any space trip I take, I'm double checking that there are sufficient funds for me to return. Also, I'm not taking that trip until Elon Musk sends his mother there and brings her back alive. Then I'm good for it. That took a bit of a dark turn right at the end, but you get the idea. Neil deGrasse Tyson was far from sold on SpaceX, but like we said, time passes and opinions definitely change. So it wasn't that surprising when just a year later, Tyson turned into one of SpaceX's biggest fans. In an interview with CNBC Make It, Tyson caught the world's attention when he said that Elon Musk would transform civilization as we knew it. He said in the interview that he thought Elon Musk was going to have a bigger influence on society than other tech personalities like Jeff Bezos, Steve Jobs, and Mark Zuckerberg. Tyson said, Musk is not simply giving us the next app that will be awesome on our smartphone. No, he is thinking about society, culture, how we interact, and what forces need to be in play to take civilization into the next century. Neil has also lauded Elon and SpaceX's efforts multiple times on his podcast, Star Talk Radio. The legendary Michio Kaku also has a lot of respect for Elon Musk and the juggernaut that is SpaceX. Speaking on a Fox Business show, the American theoretical physicist argued that Elon Musk's SpaceX has built a tremendous lead over Jeff Bezos' Blue Origin in terms of space exploration. Michio said, It's not head-to-head -head like the media would like to portray, you know, the battle of the billionaires. SpaceX has a tremendous lead over Blue Origin. They've been around the Earth several times. They go to the ISS. In fact, the last launch that they had went past the Hubble Space Telescope. That's how far it went into outer space. Also, Elon Musk is selling tickets to go to the moon, and a Japanese billionaire actually bought all of the tickets for the first flight. Michio doesn't mince his words, and if he says something, you better pay attention. A highly reliable version of Starship is most likely several years away, but the vehicle could begin a series of orbital test flights as early as 2022, which is just around the corner. Until then, thanks for watching. And welcome to the future.